In the words of the late great Bob Proctor, I would never retire. He also said, age is just a number. Now, what could put a man in a position to say, I will never retire? What could also put him in that same position to say, age is just a number? Let's get into it. Get your glasses up, get your glasses up, a toast to the men. Now, as you come in, toasters, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. The like button is free. The subscribe button is free. You don't want to miss being notified about this great content. Go ahead and hit those two buttons. Now, what would cause a man or what put a, what would put a man in position to say, I would never retire and age is just a number? Let's tackle that first one. I will never retire. You got to be doing what you're passionate about to make that statement. You got to be doing what you love. You got to be doing what exercises your gift, your natural gift and talents. That's the only way Bob Proctor was able to make that statement, that affirmation, that proclamation, because he was doing what he loved. And when you're doing what you love, you don't think about retirement. You, you, you just don't. Even if you come down a step to just mentor in the world, in the realm of your gift and talent, even if you're not active, you're not out in the field, but you just want to mentor, but it's still related to your gift and your talent. That's how you can make that statement. I will never retire. I've run across so many people over the years that have stated they are looking forward to retirement. I mean, they're, they got the clock running. They're watching the clock and they're waiting on that day where they can hit retirement age. They're waiting. That has to be an unfulfilled life. And let me tell you something. Most of these people, a vast majority of these people, have to go back to work for someone else once they retire from working from another person. They're back in the job market. They're back in the job force, the workforce, working for someone else. They're still not exercising or monetizing off of their gifts and talents. They're working for someone else. This happens all the time. And that is an unfulfilled life. That's not why we're here. We're here to exercise, to hone, exercise our gifts and our talents, to give back. And actually, that should be our currency. If everyone is doing that to the highest level, to the highest degree, we don't need paper money. We don't need coin money. We don't need gold. We don't need silver. We don't need diamonds. Because our gifts and our talents is the currency. The problem is only a small percentage of people are exercising and pursuing their gifts and their talents. So there's, there's a lack because everybody's not bringing something to the table. So we got to supplement that, right? We got to supplement that with material things as currency. Because someone is not bringing what they're supposed to bring to the table. And you know who you are. You know. So, yeah, that's the only way the late, great Bob Proctor is able to make that proclamation that I will never retire. That's the only way because he was doing what he loved to do. And you don't think about retirement when you're doing what you love to do. You just don't. Toasters. I have never thought about retirement. As many of you know, I've been in IT for over 25 years, and it's not my passion. I'm good at it. I'm not great. And I'm not great because it's not my passion. I'm good because I'm competitive. I love to work. 
and I just have a, a, a aptitude to pick up things quickly. And like I said, I'm competitive. I want to succeed. And so that makes me good. That's going to that's gonna get me to a good level, regardless of anything I do. I'm going to be good at it just because how I'm wired. But I'm not going to be great at everything. I'm just not. I have to be passionate about it to be great, uh, to want to master it. You got to be passionate because that's when you want all your energy, all your focus is on that. My focus, all my focus and energy has never been on IT, only for a limit, limited time when I need to uh, get a certification, when I need to study, when I need to uh, get acclimated with a certain technology. But then once I got it, I don't want to hear about it at home. I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to be attached to it once I leave work. That, that's not what you call passion. And so I got to be honest with you. I got to be transparent with you. And I'm not 100% out of the game, out of the corporate game. You know, so I got one filled in. And I'm telling you that for two reasons. I'm telling you that to motivate you, but I'm also telling you that so you can see my trek. You can see my walk. I can take you with me. And also I'm telling you so I can hold myself accountable. You know, it's like the old saying, if a tree falls in the forest and no one is there, does it make a sound? So I got to have witnesses. You know, everybody's different, but I got to have witnesses. And that's my juice. Somebody has to know. And so it keep me accountable because I don't want to be a, a liar. And I don't want my character tarnished. So that keeps me on my toes. But everyone's different. Man, I ran across a guy, met a guy this past weekend, Coach Moore. That's what he said his name is, Coach Moore. Coach Moore is 68 years old. I was uh, across the street at this establishment on the patio, of course, smoking a cigar and uh, just chilling. Just chilling, man. The weather was beautiful. I was chilling. He was walking around the neighborhood. This is a good area to walk. And so he was walking. And he just arrived at my table. His brother didn't ask if he could sit down. Not introduced himself. And uh, sat at the table. You know, I don't know if he needed a little break from walking or what. Like I said, Coach Moore is 68 years old. So I, I don't know. But tip-top shape. Uh, lean and mean. Tip-top shape. And uh, we just sparked up a conversation about a lot of things but throughout that long conversation about a two-hour conversation about different things something that really really uh stuck to me a few things to me, but, but something really stuck to me is that he said he'll never retire from doing what he loved now his nine to five in his day was running hospitals he was a huge exec and his thing was to run hospitals. He's retired from that. But his passion is giving private tennis lessons to youth. And he also is passionate about uh, destroying obesity. He wants to combat obesity in the U.S. It's a huge problem. So those are his two passions, and he's on a few nonprofit boards. But I just said, man, that's beautiful. That's a beautiful thing, man, where this man can just do what he want, relax, take it easy. And he spends his days, his hours, just doing what he wants to do. And he said he'll never retire from that. He's going to die doing that. That's a beautiful life. That's a beautiful life. In that two-hour conversation, he only brought up his time running hospitals maybe twice. But when it came to his fight against obesity, when it came to tennis, when it came to the nonprofit boards he's on, that made up maybe 98% of the conversation, of his conversation. I share some things about me too. But what came out of his mouth aside from his uh, retorts or his rebuttals to me uh, was about his nonprofits, his fight against obesity and 
tennis lessons with the youth, how important the youth is and how we got to protect them. Those are his passions. And he said he'll never retire from doing that. That's the kind of life we all should be pursuing. That's the kind of life we all should be living. Because that's why we're here. We're here to hone our gifts and talents, give back, and that's our currency. That's our currency. So say, for instance, Coach Moore has his gifts and talents, right? We'll just take the tennis lessons. We'll just take that. The mentoring and the tennis lessons. And say these kids, because these are these are kids with wealthy parents. He's he's uh, coaching. Say these kids' parents. Uh, one is a home builder. One is a doctor. One owns a, a grocery store. One uh one owns a, a car lot. All right. One owns one runs a hospital. What else? You know, one one runs a pharmacy. Coach Moore has everything he needs in that village. There is really no need for material currency. There is no need for paper money. There is no need for coin money. There is no need for gold and silver and diamonds. Sorry. There's no need. Because your gift and your talent is your currency. Say we got a farmer in the village and everybody's just trading. We're circulating energy. That's what we're doing. We're circulating energy. What need is there for physical money? Your currency is your gift. Your currency is your talent. I remember two years ago when I was coming out with the book, an old classmate of mine, Twan, he wanted a book. So I went by his barber shop. And uh, my thought was to hand him a book, he gives me $20. Well, while I was there, I said, well, damn, well, let me get a haircut. So I'm getting a haircut, and he's like, uh, once he's done, he's like, yeah, man, I need that book. I said, well, I'll go to the trunk and get one. So I, I went out, got a book, came back in. And he's like, how much is the book? I said, it's 20 He was a hell, there you go, you don't owe me anything. His currency was his skill set as a barber. My currency was the book. It was a trade-off. No money was exchanged. The haircut was an equal trade-off with the book. That's what we should be getting to. That's the true currency. That's the true wealth. And we got to get to that. We got to. But there's two things that's stopping us from getting to that point. And one thing Coach Moore and I talked about was the lack of understanding of delayed gratification. Basically, the lack of discipline. From an early age, we're not taught to have delayed gratification. We're not taught to plant seeds, nurture them, water them, be patient, and the harvest will come. We want to put the buggy in front of the horse. We want the harvest before we plant the seed. It just doesn't work that way. That goes against the laws of nature. That goes against the laws of the universe. It'll never work that way. And we're just not disciplined. We're not disciplined enough. And it affects us in every way of our lives. Every way. From our health to sex to relationships to to everything, man, it affects us. It really does. But I think the the greatest detriment is it gets us off our purpose. And guess what? We end up looking forward to retiring. We can't wait to retire just to step into someone else's business and work for them and still not pursuing on on our mission with our purpose. It makes no sense. It, It just doesn't. It makes no sense, man. And the second thing that stops us is fear. But I kind of think fear and the lack of discipline are tied into one another. We think we're going to miss out on something. Uh, We're scared. We're fearful of the unknown because uh, things we've created in our minds 
from things we've heard or seen or witnessed, we create this thing through our imagination, this fear in our imagination. And let me tell you something, anything you imagine, whether it's through fear or through joy, it will come to light. It will appear, anything. So that thing you have imagined that's, that you fear will come to fruition. It will, it has to, it, it will manifest. And so it becomes a barrier. So we can never jump over it. We can never go through it because that barrier has come, become so thick over the years because that fear has festered and grown. But it could be broken with one thing, man, just taking that one step and saying, you know what? I'm going to fight fear. I'm going to go against the odds. I don't care how I look. I don't care what anybody says. I'm going to deny self. And I'm going to go through it. Even if I pay a price, I'm going to go through it. And once you do that one time, the second time becomes easier. The third time becomes easier. And then it becomes second nature, just the way of life. You're knocking down barriers. You're moving through things and creating and, and living within your purpose. But we, we got to do that, people. We got to be disciplined. We got to do things in a proper order. There's a process to this. And we got to combat fear. We have to. There's no way around it. You know what I'm saying? All of us should be living the life Coach Moore is living. And I'm right there. I'm right there. I'll check back with you six months to a year. And I'll be on a whole different level. I promise you. I'll be there. I want you to meet me there. As always, from me to you, love. Peace.